Southern California's Imperial Valley borders Mexico to the south and Arizona to the east. It's a major agricultural area with a long history of vegetable production. But there's plenty of beef to go with those veggies, as Cattleman to Cattleman reporter Brian Baxter brings us a day in the life of a California cattle feeder. California is the nation's number one dairy state, so at first glance you might think this place is a big dairy farm. In fact, this is Butterspur Cattle Feeders in Brawley, California, where Steve Snow manages a feedlot that relies heavily on Holsteins, a popular choice in Imperial County. In Imperial Valley, there's capacity for about 500,000 head of cattle. There's not quite that many down here right now. And they've really developed the, the methods of feeding Holsteins. And 90% of the cattle here fed in this valley are Holstein cattle, and mostly from the calf ranches in, in San Joaquin Valley in Northern California. The Holsteins come in at about 275 pounds. They feed for a year, and they leave 1275 to 1300 pounds. The, the Holsteins are just in, incredible converters of feed. The Holsteins aren't the only unique thing about the cattle here. The feedlot is also home to some of the 900,000 steers a year that cross the border from Mexico just 20 miles away. The Mexican cattle make up about half of the butter spur numbers. The Mexican cattle are, are well acclimated to this area. They feed very well and they, they grade very well. We're, we're under fire with the new country of um, origin labeling or cool, which we don't think is very cool. Um, these cattle are now being discounted because they're from Mexico. They will feed till they're 11, 50, 1200 pounds, but yet we have to call them a product of Mexico. They're crossed when they're 350 to 450 pounds, and um, now they're facing a, a three cent discount, which is about $36 per head. The cool is just all around bad policy. I think in the beginning, people expected that with, with the country of origin labeling, USA only, they would get a, a premium for their product. But in fact, what's happened is they, they're they not getting a premium for USA cattle. The Mexican cattle are, are being discounted. And it's a little bit different than Canada where they're bringing in finished animals for slaughter. These animals are, are crossed here at 350 pounds. Steve grew up in Southern California and worked on a ranch in Hawaii for eight years. Though he enjoyed Hawaii, he thinks Butterspur cattle feeders is a great place to be. Great weather, great conversions, this is the place to feed cattle in the winter. Um, you look at these pens, you don't see any mud in them. Mud just drains the energy out of cattle. Um, our conversions are better here in the winter, and it just, you, you, this is the best place to feed cattle in the winter. It's just an exciting job. It's nonstop all day long. I, I like the people in the industry. I like the product that we produce. We measure our performance very closely, so you get to see, see how well you've done as well. It's a very, very competitive industry. With two locations and a total capacity of about 20,000 head, the cattle at Butterspur require about 350,000 pounds of feed each day. And Steve keeps a sharp eye on feed intake. Every morning I drive the bunks. And these, these pins are all GPS mapped. And I look at the bunk condition, whether it's wet slick, which means it's empty and they've been licking at it, which is not good, slick our crumbs. What we like is to find crumbs every day. And then we will add feed um, in the computer in the pickup, our takeaway feed, or leave it the same. And then when I'm done calling all the bunks for that morning, all that information is downloaded into a computer in the feed truck. So the feeder then knows exactly what to feed that bunk. The Butterspur operation also has a unique feed ration featuring a bright green addition that Steve says may be the secret to keeping the cattle coming back for more. We here, I don't want to give you any secrets away, but we, we call it the broccoli factor. We think that the broccoli adds something, we haven't figured out what it is that makes the cattle perform a little bit better. So that's what we call it, the broccoli factor. Basically what I'm doing right now is I'm taking all the plant trash from the broccoli field. So after they're done with harvesting the broccoli, I go in and harvest the plant material, mix it with corn cobs, some more trash that I get from a corn cob plant, and um, I bag it, make silage out of it. Steve says the idea to feed broccoli came as a result of creative thinking after corn prices went up last year. 
And NCBA member Steve fully understands the struggles facing today's cattlemen, and he believes the voice of NCBA is needed now more than ever. I'm an NCBA member because we're, we have a lot of issues facing this industry right now. We need a strong group in Washington and, and on a state level. We need someone on our side representing our issues and, and views. I think what concerns me the most is what you're seeing now is suburban and urban areas that are dictating how we farm and ranch, and, and that is of great concern, particularly here in California. Steve admits that you need a high tolerance for setbacks to be in the cattle feeding business. So why does he do it? Because you love it. It gets in your blood. It just absolutely gets in your blood. Uh, you have to be willing to work seven days a week. And um, we have to feed these cattle three times a day, seven days a week. And they're on such what we call hot rations that, that you can't compromise you have to get those cattle fed every day. No doubt those butter spur cattle do need their daily serving of broccoli without the hollandaise. From Imperial County, California, I'm Brian Baxter for NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen. Steve Snow is a member of the National Cattlemen's Beef Association. You can learn more about joining NCBA and about butter spur cattle feeders by calling 1-866-USA-BEEF or visiting beefusa.org. Beef, quality assurance.